I try to not let it get to me, but you, you have moments where you think about it, like the people I grew up in, it, like the household with, like three of them gone just like that in the last couple of years. People that I see every day, that I used to talk to every day. It feels surreal the first time it happened, then it happened again, you're like, ah. Oh. Then you're just like, dang, we really all we got, you know? You gotta take advantage of the moments you have with the family. But I know it, it tries to break you, but uh, I don't think I can be break. Detectives search the street looking for evidence. The yellow markers indicate shell casings, and there are dozens. Witnesses say a lone gunman may have used an assault weapon to fire at the two teenage victims. 15-year-old Jacquez Mack and 16-year-old Corey Hill were hit with multiple shots before being pronounced dead in a nearby hospital. driving through the city. As much pain it brought, you know, I still love the city. Cause it's like, it's a light everywhere, man. It's a kid that was out here, you know, I came from, like my, my parents came from nothing, you know, I ain't supposed to make it. My mother, you know, she taught us how to survive. And, you know, we didn't grow up with silver spoons in our mouth. We didn't grow up with bronze spoons. We grew up sharing everything. So the aspect of family orientation is a must amongst our family. And without that, we don't have anything. When he was three years old, he just wanted a football. Like, but I can buy the football. You can get a teacher's that hard part and let me take care of the easy part. Football ain't number what, $12.99? Ray used to have me going up to the school getting a football. I go pick up a football, everybody else walking out with big old boxes of things. He just want a football. He just, he been like that since he was three. You're not supposed to choose favorites, but you always just have one. And he was very much the gentle giant in third grade. He was very quiet, and but he was very attentive. Kids would instigate with him a lot because he was so big, so they would try to get him to, get him to fight or whatever, get into trouble, and at least when he was around me, he tended to not do that, and it was obvious that he was really trying to make you know, the most of his year. My mom and her had a parent-teacher conference to talk about me, and she told my mom just that uh, I have like a, a talent in it and I got a chance to make it out. And my mom liked that, that she said that, and they, and they grew their relationship from that. Just um, her, her, her telling my mom that hey, she wants to make sure I get through college because I got the ability to do it. After I decided to go to law school, I wanted to just stay in touch with him and then there were a couple other kids. And unfortunately, with the way that Chicago Public Schools is set up, it's very hard to have, I think, really meaningful relationships outside of the confines of the school. And so during the course of the year, we could do field trips and whatnot, but in terms of having a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with kids that they need to you know, really feel like people are invested in them, we weren't really able to do that. So once I stopped teaching, I was able to spend more time with Raekwon and with a couple other students and you know, try to have more meaningful activities and experiences. she quit, she still stayed around. And she sent him a card, I think it was his birthday. Like, I'm gonna be around for your your eighth grade graduation when you graduate out of high school and when you graduate out of college. And she can't lie, she's here. She She's really a big factor. I was valedictorian of eighth grade. So Mackenzie came back to the graduation and everything. Her and my mom met up at the graduation and then they seen that I had a good enough score to get into a um, Catholic school or like a, um, or, or better school in the sense of like, not in the neighborhood where I grew up. He started high school and he was living in North Lawndale in East Garfield Park. And he would, I would see him after school a couple times a week and we would work on homework. And then the, the schoolwork started to pile up and the football started to pile up and it became increasingly challenging for him. We collectively made the decision 
that he would stay with me during the school week because it would just be a lot easier, essentially like the commute time, right? I mean, it would just, we would cut down on a few different things. So she agreed to do that. And in doing so, you know, it was a tremendous sacrifice to her because she, here she is, you know, entrusting somebody else during, you know, the school week to take care of her son and make sure that he's doing what he needs to do. It, it was hard for me, but I know my baby wanted what he wanted. You see, I'm for my kids. If my kids want to do better, I'm for them. You see what I'm saying? I got, I had six kids. See, I got five now because my son passed. But if they want to do better, I'm with them 100 grand, whatever you guys want to do. They know that. I'm for them. Over the years, the more he realized that like he had control over his own destiny. And so, you know, there's only so much you can you know, blame others for your circumstance, or this is, this is the cards, these are the cards I'm dealt, he's just played the cards he's had. You know, you run with it because you don't get a lot, and especially as a young person, to be able to forego the here and now, you know, and just the, the idea of delayed gratification, he was always very good at that. I mean, there were weekends after weekends where he would not go out at night. When you're a teenager and when you're in college, that's often really hard to do. Um, in terms of just postponing gratification, but I think that as he saw that it worked, you know, in high school he saw that it worked and he saw that he was, he was making progress, it became, it's just kind of more instilled in him now. My freshman year, I came up here and I lost my, uh, my cousin, he died, you know, he got shot up and everything on the streets of Chicago. It was my, that's my cousin, it was my first cousin. We did everything together. My mom and his mom lived together growing up because we were so young, we were born so young. My mom had me when she was 14. And we grew up in the same house. We like twins, we dressed together and everything, man. Same clothes <laughs> and all that. But you know, I had, uh, I lost in my freshman year up here, which you know, it hurt, it hurt a lot, but. You can't, can't give up on something like that, you know. you know. Two years later, I lose my little brother, you know, to the same thing. And, you know, that, that, that's probably the main reason why I want to be, like, help out all the kids, like, all of them misled, it, you know. It's a lot of misled, like, they were great people, too. Like, you can sit down and talk to them, you play video game with them. If you play video game with my cousin, you probably think he's the funniest guy in the world. He's a great dude, great dude, but the, the environment he's raised in, he thinks this is the way to go. And I just want to show all the kids that's not. It's the it's, it's right way, you know? And I don't break down because of stuff like that happens to people all over Chicago. Somebody probably lost Four brothers, six brothers, that's Chicago. It's crazy like that, it's, it's real. It's like, it's, it's a struggle. I'm not gonna fold because of that. I got a goal and I'm, I'm accomplishing it, you know? On some level probably hardens him and makes him, you know, he's very angry, but he's trying to channel it into something positive, recognizing that him, you know, coming back or seeking vengeance, none of that's gonna do it, right? I mean, how do you really improve the situation for the rest of your family and the rest of the community? As you get out, you see what, you know, learn everything you can and start, you know, really intellectually thinking about how could I make this better and how could I protect other kids from this happening to them? Well, I think what Raekwon's been through on a personal level has, has shaped him, first of all, as a person. It's uh, created a lot of adversity in his life and sadness, but with that, I think, came a certain deal of maturity for him as well, and uh, I think that maturity gets really passed on to, to our football team. You know, you never know what really a problem is. Is problem really losing a football game, or is it losing a brother? I mean, there's a distinct difference. I mean, it is crazy how, I mean, I could still, I don't know, still be able to come ready to work every day after like all I done seen, after all I done been through. And I, there's so much stuff I done seen and, and been through and I don't know, I just want, I want it to be right now and I'm and I'm gonna go get, I'm trying to, I mean, I, and that's what I want to like accomplish, like that goal to like help everybody. 
over the last couple of years, I mean, that's really what he's been thinking about is what, you know, what do we do about this? Like, how can we make this a better, safer place for everybody so that other families don't go through what we've gone through? And um, it's hard because part of it is that he can't, you know, he needs to stay in college and he knows that he needs to stay in East Lansing and he needs to get his, um, he needs to get his degree. And it doesn't mean he doesn't love his family. He doesn't love his community. It's just that in order to better his community, he knows he needs to leave it, right? He needs to leave it. He needs to see and learn, go to university. And then, you know, I know that his goal is to come back and to see what he can do to improve things. I just, I like, I like interacting with the kids nowadays. Like when I go back home, like I like walking to a store and talking to the kids, like seeing how they feel. But I go to my local park, Garfield Park, where uh, there's a football team, uh, younger kids and everything. So I go there, I work them out sometimes. Just try to talk to them, you know, they like, they, they look up to somebody like me because I, I play football at a big, prestigious college or something like that. Just that, that type of approach, is, that's, what, that's what humans should do. You know, you should care about humans. You put on here to care, you know, you got a heart and everything. So, I mean, I don't think there's nothing wrong with being able to care about yours and wanting to help others. First and 10 at the 29. Quick handoff to Vault running to his left and he's nailed for a loss. Big loss back at the 23. Raekwon Williams hits him for a six yard loss. I think one of the things we're always trying to do is make people better. Uh, people come here as an 18 year old freshman, you know, naive or, or uh, whatever, and they leave um, more mature, more seasoned, with a great deal of experiences both on the field and off the field that create pressure in their lives. And ultimately, I think that pressure in their lives make them stronger individuals that prepare them for uh, for bigger roles later in life. And I think Ray, Raekwon Williams has a big role in this life uh, to fulfill. Uh, he kids about being the mayor of Chicago and being a goal of his. And I, I tell him, hey, dream big. You know, you really can have an impact on people. He is that type of person. He give us motivation. He, he let us know that everything's gonna be all right at the end of the tunnel. Back home, we going through the dark days of dealing with death. Um, on last year, my brother got killed on June 5th. Two days prior, my nephew got killed June 7th on his way to school. And, um, you know, Raekwon motivation of him being strong down there by himself only inquired for us to be strong here where everything is going on at. He's showing everybody that you got a chance. You give me, you don't got to do what you got to do. You can still make it. Regardless of where you come from, you can still make it. Everybody know, every, everybody don't believe that you can make it. He, he in Michigan State and football playing, doing real good. That means you can do something with yourself. You can make it. You get what I'm saying? It, it shows a difference that you can make it. Because I came from and look at my baby, he's doing, he's doing good. He's doing good and he's, his brother and them following in his footsteps, they wanna do stuff too. So, he's motivating them, that's a good thing. Was my goal from all of this or like, even like all of everything that I do, is to show people like where I'm from, that there's a right way to do things. It's not always wrong, a wrong way or I know how easily distracted you can get, but there's a way, that's what I want. That's, what, that's my main goal. Like, I want to show people there's, there's, a, there's, there's light at the end of a tunnel if you work hard, and doing it the right way is the right way to be. And everybody where I'm from, you have, a, you have a chance to do it. You just gotta stay down and do it. 